Hi. It's been a while. Um, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> you know, you don't feel like doing anything, you just don't do it. So, I've been enjoying watching everybody else making videos, and I've not been making them, so sorry. Or maybe not. Maybe you're glad I've been making videos for all I know. Anyway, um, I've got a lot of stuff to show. I'm not going to show it all. I think I picked out sort of the best stuff, but I'm going to try to not make this too long. Anyway, um, first things first, always with what's being played in the background, I'm slowly building up my John McLaughlin collection with the uh, extrapolation. Um, I've seen this around a couple of places, and the cover is always beat, and so is the disc inside. Well, I found myself a little cut corner version. The cover looks good, and guess what? The, the disc was dusty, but I was able to um, give it a good cleaning, even right there at the record store at Jive Time Records yesterday. Andy, this is one of the uh, items that I picked up uh, from the post that I put up on uh, Facebook about where I'd been. So yeah, extrapolation, John McLaughlin, very good. I got more of his music to dive into, and I plan to do that. Um, so next I want to talk about is uh, Tim. Uh, I got the the Black Sea with the bag. Finally, I own a Black Sea with a bag, and what I love about it is it's it is the UK version, which um, I was not quite 100 percent sure if it was the UK version or the US version. But yeah, it's got the small XTC Black Sea as opposed to the giant XTC Black Sea. So this is great because my XTC uh, UK catalog is slowly building up, um, or rebuilding actually. Um, actually, in a number of cases like in this, I've got the US version, but I've never had the UK version. Um, and some of the other albums, I had the UK version. So thank you very much, Tim. I really appreciate it. I'm glad we were able to, uh, to um, take one of these copies off your hands. It's very, very nice. So that's terrific. Let's see, where am I going to put these? You say, am I in the picture or am I not in the picture? I don't want to be too much in the picture. Is that ever the hold up the records? A um, couple other things. Back, just right back here. Uh, this is a reissue of the Thelonious Monk, Mysterioso. There's a, um, this was $9.99, along with another Monk album that I picked up. Um, they have an original of this up at Easy Street. It's in really good condition, very good condition. Um, 75 bucks. I'd love to buy it, uh, but when I saw it, first off, the artwork on it is much clearer than this artwork is here, uh, and I really love this artwork. Um, I have yet to bust open either of those to play them and hear how they sound, so we'll have to see. Uh, now I'm going to do that next. Um, so getting those things out of the way, oh, and also the um, Neil Young's Americana. Uh, I was originally not going to buy this because of the price, and I found it at a reasonable price online after seeing, I think, Tony, uh, Mr. Farpoy, uh, he uh, posted some pictures of it and showed that it had an etching on side four and was going on about it, and I thought, you know, uh, given how quickly these are in print and out of print, I know that I will be going, I wish I had bought that when I had the chance, I found it online at a good price. And um, I picked it up. That was after saying 40 bucks. I'm not going to buy it. Well, that's what they wanted up the street, and those all sold. So I was glad to find a copy of that, and um, that was another new purchase. So I think that takes care of all the new purchases here. Anyway, uh, starting with what I just recently picked up, uh, just today, um, got a few things, just freebies, which was really kind of nice. Um, as I walked into uh, Easy Street. Uh, first off was, uh, they just had some promotional stuff up in the front desk, and then a whole bunch of these uh, Yesayer singles that they hand out when you buy the uh, album there. I didn't buy the album, they actually pre-ordered it, and I have it, but I like this, uh, just a plain paper, brown paper bag with a stamp on it. Uh, Fragrant World, backed with no bones. So, and it's a really, it's a really cool, I, I can't remember who showed it, uh, my apologies. I think Chris, good one? I can't remember on Facebook uh, showed this I don't know how much it's coming through that this is transparent but it has kind of like a smoky kind of billowy kind of uh, effect to it so very cool interesting um, colored vinyl on there again they just sort of handed it to me they had like a stack of these 45s at the front desk so um, he just sort of handed that guy to me 
Uh, also a couple others. Um, it's a very nice up at Easy Street. They just could have handed me this one. Uh, this is by The Heavy, who I've seen a new release of. Don't know anything about the band, don't know what they sound like, but it's on nice, just barely translucent green vinyl. Um, it's not really opaque. It's definitely, you can see, I can see uh, you know, my finger going through here. So it's not transparent, but it's translucent. Very cool color of green. Uh, there's one for you, Dwayne, a green vinyl, which I just picked up today, in a green sleeve. Amazing. So I've got these to listen to. Also one other uh, 45 that was handed out as a promo from a band called The uh, Tallest Man on Earth, uh, 1904, backed with Cycles. I believe this is just black vinyl. Yeah. So very cool. I'll listen to these and give them a listen and see what they sound like. Um, I'm sure some of you folks out there are familiar with The Tallest Man on Earth. I heard of the name of that band, but I'm not 100%. Um, familiar with them. I don't think I've heard any of their music. So uh, after getting those today, I wandered around, spent you know an hour or so, sort of mindlessly <clears throat> wandering around looking at everything. And uh, the record buyer was uh, doing his thing, and up at his desk, uh, he had a nice uh, ten-inch uh, Miles Davis uh, record there, and I sort of looked at it and checked it out. I was trying to you know figure out what it was. Was it Japanese pressing? Definitely was too nice to be um, an original 50s pressing, so it must have been a reissue. But uh, I went ahead and picked it up, a uh, reasonable price. He gave me a good price on it. Um, I thought it might have been a Japanese pressing because it came in the rounded edged, kind of almost rice paper, plastic, thin plastic. But it's on the Luna label there, as you can see. And very cool. I always see that Luna label. Even upside down is a very good Three tracks on each side. It's a 33 and a third, uh, 10 inch. And it's immaculate. It's definitely 200 grams. Um, might be 180, but probably 200, I believe. I looked it up online, uh, as he did. And there was only one, if you, if you search on eBay for the title of this uh, 10 inch, which is, I can show the cover of it yet, a uh, young man with a horn, Miles Davis. And apparently this is um, original, some of his earliest work, if not his earliest officially released work that he'd done. Um, there is one listing if you search for what has already been sold or on eBay, whatever, uh, listings that are already uh, up and over with. And you can find it on there. It, it went, uh, it says it's a 10 inch, 200 gram YX LP set. So I'm assuming this is 200 grams, YX, um, but this selling also had a 12 inch uh, disc of the same material at, run at 45 RPM. This is a 10 inch run at 33 and a third, which is interesting. So very cool to have this, you know, so far behind on uh, proper Miles Davis recordings that, um, I think I need to hold these higher, don't I? <clears throat> that, um, you know, and whenever I come across anything that's remotely close to being you know, unique, or original, or new. Uh, I jump on them. Hopefully they're a decent price. I'm certainly not going to pay some of the collector's prices that these records are worth. It's just too crazy, but um, I was very happy to get that. I haven't listened to that one yet. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it, so I have to worry about it. Uh, going on with 10 inches, uh, this, the new Sigur Ross. A few people have shown this. Now Derek has showed this. Um, I'm looking forward to, and um, Vinyl Fury, damn, down in Portland, we're showing this as well, we're talking about it. I, I'm looking forward to playing this from the inside out. That'll be a lot of fun. I went to one store, uh, I went to Silver Platters, and they said they were supposed to get eight copies of this in. And I went there and I asked, could you hold one for me? This was last week. They said, sure. Uh, and, and I came in on Tuesday and they said they didn't get any of them. And it had been listed as discontinued, which I just went, uh, well, it was a limited edition, limited run or whatever. And uh, I figured, well, uh, you know, once again, I'm missing out on uh, you know, something special, but oh well. So I go up to Easy Street, and they've got like 10 of them, 15 of them, and 9.99. So I went ahead and grabbed one, very happy. And um, looking forward to breaking this open and giving it a listen. Um, so that's pretty much all I picked up today. Uh, yesterday I went up to Jive Time, and... Uh, this is um, what I picked up. Uh, start with this. 
This is Ray Davies. I may already have a copy of this. If I do, I might be putting one up for sale or just somebody might be getting some uh, VCLT. Who knows? I might be part of a contest when I hit I'm getting close to 300 subscribers, which is just bizarre for me. Um, and thank you to everybody who's been recently subscribing. It's very nice of you. Uh, this is the soundtrack to the uh, film Return to Waterloo, Ray Davies, with members of the Kinks. It's basically a Kinks album. Uh, I don't believe Dave plays on it. Dave Davies doesn't play on it. It's kind of an EP. It's a little bit longer than an EP, but it's not quite as long as a full-length record. It's got, uh, well, it technically has five tracks on side one, but the first track is intro, which is just a sound effect intro. lasts maybe a minute. Uh, so four tracks on one side, four tracks on the B side. Um, and if you've never heard this and you're a Kinks fan, even if you're not a Kinks fan, find a copy of this. I got this one for three bucks and it's just, a, it's got a notch out of it down here. The vinyl is in perfect shape. It's like it's never been touched. So very, very happy to have that on vinyl. I've got the uh, CD of it and um, very happy to have this on vinyl. It was an easy, it was an easy pickup. Um, once again, I had some pretty good luck for uh, singles. Uh, at Jive Time, they always seem to get a lot of good 12-inch singles, and um, these are both U.S. pressings, I believe. Uh, Love Song by The Cure, and Lullaby, is it? Yeah, a Lullaby by The Cure as well. So these, are, I think, were both three or four dollars each. So very happy to have those. And these are the U.S. pressings. They had, a, they had an import pressing of Love Cats, which I would have loved to have picked up. And it was a reasonable price. I think it was about four bucks, but the cover was kind of warped, almost like it had had not really water damage or some kind of moisture damage to it. But the vinyl looked like it needed some cleaning up. If it had been like two bucks, I would have nabbed it. But uh, these guys don't need any cleaning at all. It's like somebody either bought them or they got them and they never played them. So very happy. Love those. Uh, labels. Even for the U.S. they did very cool labels that correspond to the artwork on the cover. So very cool to have those to add to my growing Cure collection. Uh, something else whoops, Something else that I can add to my um, a new growing collection as well is uh, Tangerine Dream album. I picked up Phaedra, which is one I did not have. It's a U.S. pressing. And I got this at a very reasonable price, and it's a nice U.S. pressing, original U.S. pressing on Virgin. Yes, promo copy. And what's nice is, I don't know if this is the appropriate sleeve or not here, but on Atlantic, but it is a white label Virgin American promo. It says promotion, prom, prom, promotion copy only, not for sale. I always like it when it says that right on the label as opposed to just you know, being another copy of the album. So that's very cool. I've uh, got a good handful of Tangerine Dream albums now. and They're going to be a mixture of both U.S. and U.K. pressings, or even German pressings. And um, that's fine. You know, I'm going to just slowly but surely add to my collection of uh, Tangerine Dream albums. That'll be fun. That'll be nice. Sort of one of my collection aims, you might say. Uh, yesterday also, it's um, something I've been looking at and have found a few places on eBay, but I just haven't uh, you know, pulled the trigger on it. It's because I wasn't really sure about buying it on eBay and all this and that. And oddly enough, I've never owned these two albums on vinyl before. Um, and I've kind of wanted it on this collection. And it's the uh, Pink Floyd and Ice Pair. And um, this is a US pressing. What's great about it is, you know, even though it's got the sticker on it, no one's tried to peel the sticker off. Nobody's tried to peel the sticker off to see the naked lady on the other side. Uh, even this one down here, same thing. Um, you know, the showering lady on this side, nobody's peeled off the stickers. The stickers are intact. That actually is pretty cool. Uh, you know, I can see the pictures of the naked lady inside on. on on, online all the time. That's not a problem. So this is just great. It's on harvest. All the inserts, uh, you know, the inner sleeves are in great shape. Just it's like again, it's it's almost as though somebody bought it and then just put it away. Didn't do anything with it. Didn't play it. Or if they did, 
they played it lovingly. But it's nice, it's on the Harvest label. As I was looking around for it, just online, just out of curiosity, I noticed that they were pressing this up until, well, what, the late 80s, because there was an edition of this where it was the revived Rainbow label. Uh, Rainbow, you know, the old, old Rainbow label around the edge, just like the original Beatle albums that came out when they revived it in the 80s. That would be cool to get an American pressing on that label. And it probably, I'm guessing they didn't make too many of those, but never know. Anyway, so I finally got these two albums on vinyl. Would I like them on UK vinyl originals? Absolutely. I would love to get uh, their very first Piper of the Gates of Dawn in mono original on Columbia with the blue label, uh, black and blue label. Um, I gotta save up my money for that or sell something. But anyway, uh, until then, uh, very happy to have this and finally have these on vinyl. Um, it's I remember having Dark Side and Wish We Were Here and I sold those. Kinda wish I hadn't, but I you know, I did. But I'll get them back again. I did get the reissue of those, both of those, but it'd be nice to get originals of those. Um, I do have a an earlier last decade, two thousands, um, pressing of Dark Side of the Moon that came out from from some European country. Uh, it was official. Uh, I just happened to find it up at Easy Street a number of about a year ago, just before the reissue that just came out came out. So I have that, but it'd be nice to have an original original. I remember somebody was posting on Facebook showing the um, solid triangle uh, label, which I, I don't think I've ever seen before. That was very cool. I'd like to look for one of those. So anyway, um, also something I picked up recently. Again, I wasn't planning on this. I have a, well, let me give you a little bit of, a little bit of perspective here. Let's see. Is this it? Yes. I think I've shown this before. This is my white album. Okay. It never really comes across in these videos exactly the quality, but this is trash. I mean, I bought this way back when just because it was an original, has the raised letters, has a uh, 38,596, but unfortunately number 38,596 got trashed. Uh, it wasn't me that trashed it. I probably just paid a couple bucks for it, but I mean, just it, I don't think it has the, it doesn't have the photographs, I don't think it has the poster, the, this is just, you see how dirty it is. And, um, you know, these are the original inner sleeves, I believe. But, you know, they're falling apart, and literally, I mean, literally the vinyl is so bad, I don't care about touching it and doing this to it. I mean, people might be going, oh my god, believe me, I'm probably doing it a favor by rubbing my hands all over it. I'm probably cleaning it to a certain extent. It's really, it's just really roughed up. I mean, there are scratches, some are feeling, anyway, the bottom line is, Horrible. It was basically, it's been a placeholder for a very long time. Now I've got other copies of the White Album. I've got Japanese, a couple of Japanese pressings. Um, and I've got the White Album from here in the uh, Dutch Blue Box. Put this back up here. But, to my pleasure and surprise, uh, earlier this week I found a newer, cleaner, original U.S. pressing of the White Album at a very reasonable price, uh, I thought. Plus, I got five bucks off with the coupon, so <laughs> I basically got it. I think I got this for 25 bucks, um, which I was very happy if, to play for, for that. Now, this is a later pressing, even though it's 226,775. It's got the letter A out in front of it, so it's like they went through the numbers cycle once, and they did the letter A, and then they did the numbers. The cover has got some wear. Um, I'm going to follow uh, Dwayne's uh, advice on one of his uh, uh, Lazarus on one of his um, email or emails, one of his um, posts where he talks about how to clean up some covers. And I think this cover will clean up really nice using uh, some of his advice. But, you know, there's just some little bit of ring wear here and a little bit of a little bit of wear. That, it's a white album. You know, it's a white cover got to expect there's going to be some issues. Uh, has the, it, was, it was nice to find the original 
sleeves were in here, even though they've been placed in newer sleeves. The inside looks, you know, is in great shape. And what's also really, really nice is everything is in one thing right here. It's got all the goodies. It's got the poster. It's got the poster here. I want to unfold it. Uh, it looks, you know, a little yellowing, a little marks here and there. It's got the photos, which is great. You know, terrific. They're in great shape. Nothing's been done to them. Basically, we're just sort of left alone in the album. Um, so very happy about that. Photos. Oh, one side of the record. I knew this was going to be a long post. I was trying to not to make it a long post. It also includes a uh, spacer, which. I think a lot of people threw these away. Um, the spacers were just that. They were there to create a space to protect the photos and in some cases to even out the thickness of both sides of the record, I believe. Uh, with a poster in one, records in both, and they had spacers. I think the, um, the UK version had two spacers. There was just one spacer in this one. Maybe the American version had, a, had another spacer and it just, for whatever reason, isn't in here. I don't know. But... Uh, Anyway, I was glad to get an American version in such a good shape. Oh, and the vinyl. Let's not forget about the vinyl. The vinyl's in great shape. Uh, and I'm going to show that real quick, just one of the discs, because I know Jay is a, uh, uh, a big Apple Records fan. He really loves that Apple label. Uh, and the vinyl is, you know, could have been made yesterday. Just perfect. I was just amazed. I was like, wow. So, you know, this is probably a later pressing, but it is one that has the um, embossed Beatles uh, name on it and has uh, the number numbering on it, and the vinyl is in great shape. So, anyway, um, you know, I'm going to cut this short. I'm going to say that's it for this uh, post, and I'm going to continue on and make kind of like a part two. Um, start off with some other things, but this pretty much was what I picked up uh, the past couple days. Um, in my findings, got a good handful. I got a lot more. So I got enough cubicle full of stuff I could probably show that I just haven't been able to keep keep up with. But I'll post another post here. I know that I've gone almost close to 20 minutes since one side of the record's over with, and um, I've got some more 45s to show, and I'll do that on uh, part two or in the next update, which I'll be making right after this one. So thanks for watching, and um, glad to be posting again. I just went through a little funky area there where I just didn't feel like talking to a camera and pretending I'm talking to, seeing in my mind all, the, all, all you folks. Some of you I don't even know what you look like because you don't have you don't have channels. If you're gonna subscribe to me, start posting stuff. <laughs> I don't mind people watching that don't post. It's not anything like that. It'd just be nice if you know you get a message saying, "Oh, so and so has subscribed to you." If you want to. Uh, re you know, respond by resubscribing or subscribing to them as well. Click on the button. And you go there and unfortunately there's a channel but you know they don't have any videos put up. So uh, yeah I was that way for a while too. I was subscribing to people and I was watching stuff and you know I, I the thing is you don't subscribe to them when you see that. And then it's not until later on that they start posting and you don't know anything about it. And you realize oh you know, uh, they're actually starting to post now. Well, I didn't subscribe to you in the first place because there's nothing to subscribe to. So, anyway, well, that's a little bit off my chest about that. So, anyway, part two will be coming up. I hope this hasn't gone on too long. Like we all know, you can talk for 40 minutes and it doesn't feel like any time's gone by at all. But anyway, thanks for sticking uh, with me on this one. Part two next, and I'll be talking to you later. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.